It turns out the key to understanding NIM with an arbitrary number of piles is to rewrite the pile sizes in binary. And this is a cool trick. So we're not going to be able to go into why it works in this class, but you can do this and you can play someone on the computer and you can always be guaranteed to win. So the fact here that's important is depends on knowing how to XOR two or more binary numbers. So this is the definition we're going to start with. So if you XOR two binary numbers, then you just make it so that anytime there's an even number of ones, it becomes zero. And uh, zero is also an even number. So one XOR zero is one, zero XOR one is one, one XOR one is zero, zero XOR zero is zero, one XOR zero is one. So we're going to start with the rule that zero XOR zero is equal to zero. 1 XOR 0 is equal to 1, 0 XOR 1 is equal to 1, and 1 XOR 1 is equal to 0. This is our basic setup. And then when you want to do it for a longer string, you just do it column by column. Turns out the key to understanding NIM with an arbitrary number of piles is to rewrite the pile sizes in binary. And this is a cool trick. then the, the position that you're looking at is a losing position. So you can always you can expand what we understood from two pile NIM to like 50 pile NIM. All you have to do is be able to XOR, which is a really easy thing to do on a computer. So let's um, look at, suppose we have one pile of 17, one pile of three, and one pile of 22. And the question is, do we want to go first or second if we're starting NIM where we have three piles and these are our pile sizes. Well, to answer that question of whether or not we should go first, what we want to do is XOR the pile sizes together. So first we have to convert these to binary numbers. And so then we can use our algorithm to figure out what the binary representations of these numbers are. For so for 17, I can do my, my little table trick that I just showed. Start with 17, divide by two, I get eight with a remainder of one. Divide by two, I get four with a remainder of zero. Divide by two, I get two with a remainder of zero. Divide by two, I get one with a remainder of zero. Divide by two, I get zero with a remainder of one, and then I read it up. So 17 is going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, base 2. 3 is pretty easy. 3, just divide by 2, I get 1 with a remainder of 1. And divide by 2, I get 0 with a remainder of 1. So reading that backwards, 3 is the same thing as 1, 1, base 2. And then um, for 22, I'd like to ask you to do 22. So when we did 22, you're telling me we got 22 is equal to 10110 zero, one, one, base two. And so now we're gonna XOR these together. And when you XOR them in threes, you just can XOR the first two and then XOR the, it works just like regular addition. If you're adding, you can just add column wise. And so one XOR one XOR zero is uh, zero. 0 XOR 1 XOR 1 is 0. 0 XOR 1 is 1. 0 XOR 0 is 0. 0 XOR 0 is 0. So it turns out that 17 XOR 3 XOR 22 is equal to 8. Because this, this is, um, I'm sorry, is equal to 1, 2, 4, is equal to 4. So if I look at that, I say, okay, this is not zero. So I want to go first because it's not, because the XOR is not zero. I want to go first because I know that there's a way to win from here. And then what I want to do when I go first is I want to make it so that my opponent ends up on a losing position, which means that they're going to end up with something where they are on XOR zero. So I want to make it so they end up on an XOR equals zero configuration. Now, as I think about this, I have to think about, okay, how can I calculate what will make my opponent be on XOR, Z, uh, XOR to zero? Well, what makes something XOR to be zero is that you have an even number of uh, ones in every column. 
And if I look at that, there's one place here where I had an odd number of ones right here. And so remember, if a number is XORed with itself, you get zero. So what I actually want to do is I want to take whatever my XOR result was from one of the piles. So I'm going to, my move will be to take four from one of the piles because that was the amount that I had when I XORed. Now it doesn't matter which pile I take four from. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to take 4, 13. So my move will be, which will result in 13, 3, 22. Now, if I look at 13 um, and do the algorithm, I'll get 13 divided by 2 is 6, uh, 2 times 6 plus 1. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3 with a remainder of 0. 3 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0 with a remainder of 1. So this is going to be... 1, 1, 0, 1, base 2. 3 is still 1, 1, base 2. And 22 is still 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, base 2. Now, if I XOR these three together, I get 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And I XOR all of these together. 0, 0, 0. Uh-oh. Did I do something wrong here? Apparently, I can't do it that way because I didn't work. So what if I take 4 from 22 instead? Hmm. Let's try again. I look 17, 3, 22. So if I take 22 and I subtract 4, I get 18. And 18 will be 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And now if I do 22 XOR with these, so 3 was still 1, 1. 17 was still 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So now if I XOR these, I get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. XOR 1, 1. XOR 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is a losing position for my opponent. The mistake I made when I pulled from 17 is I didn't pull from the largest. So you can actually, you can get the right thing to pull, but you still have to figure out what pile to pull it from. I figured out that the XOR value was four, but I needed to take that four from 22. I couldn't take it from 17. And if you keep doing this, you'll win the game every time. You just have to keep doing this convert to binary XOR calculation and you'll get there. Does that make sense?